23 on EA Sports. And front and center is McCall Hardman. He starts play fourth in the NFL in receiving yardage. It's the Colts and the Bengals under the lights on Thursday night. These folks in the Circle City, they love their Colts, and they have packed the house tonight as we welcome you to Lucas Oil Stadium in downtown Indianapolis. Tonight, the stage is set for our final Thursday night game of the year between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Indianapolis Colts. Well, welcome, everybody, again alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon God and CD. We've got an interesting test here today. One of the league's best passing games and one of the best pass defenses set to square up and see who can perform better in a high-profile matchup. And you and I talk about all the time how fortunate we are to be in this position and be around these types of games. And as jacked up as these fans are, how about these two teams? They've been looking forward to testing themselves against what is considered the best on the other side. This is going to be a lot of fun, a very exciting battle headed our way. The holiday season is upon us. We've got the gift of the NFL as we're underway here in Week 16. No run back here on the opening kickoff as we'll start at the 25. The Bengals offense here ready to rock and roll. Joe Burrow is the man at quarterback. And he comes to the end of the season leading the NFL in passing yards. And that's not necessarily something you set out to do at the beginning of the year, but it's a good illustration of how remarkable and consistent he's been all season. This one down to mix it. And he'll be up in it at the 28 yard line. Just a three yard game there. Charles, Thursday night game. I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat. Is that correct? I think you're right about that because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in a normal week to put in a full playbook. So, as you said, you shrink the playbook, pick out the plays that work best for you. You know what else you're looking for? It's a, the freshest guys coming off the last game to play on a Thursday night. Guys have a little extra pep in their step. You go to them early and often. He's going to sling this deep downfield. I really don't think you can fault the decision making here because your offensive quarterback, they really had a big week last week, and you're ready for them to go again here. Not the anticipated result, of course, but you definitely understand why they did what they did. That quarterback's been hot. You want to keep the ball in his hands and see if he can keep the magic going. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. And they will be led out by their rookie quarterback. And they are in rhythm on offense because of him. I mean, right now, he's got everything going the way he wants to, finding the receivers the way he wants to, looking over defenses. No interceptions is the number I lock in on before a touchdown pass isn't so bad either. Yeah, what a game he had last week. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Good. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Trey Hendrickson, he's the one to get him, and that is set yeah, number sorry, seven I for I him on the year. Play. I, and so I picked, much um, for that great field position to start the game. Now they're way behind the sticks. Now. But Can't I picked a completely different play. That's why I like, kind of started running right off to one side. I'm like, whoa, this is not the right play. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. They'll look to throw here. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by Jamel Dean. And the Bengals are going to take possession of the football. Here we go. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Throw left side complete to Chase. And they're going to be set up now with the ball at the 13-yard line. 
From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. They're passing here. Joe Burrow throwing middle, but it's... I know tight ends love this route because a lot of times they'll make a block first and get a little bit of space and then come across the middle because in their mind, they're thinking catch the ball and then drop the hammer on the little guys in the secondary. Unable to drop the hammer. He just dropped the pass. And the Bengals are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. And remember, this drive started off following go, the turnover. Go. And they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there. And now they're looking at a first and goal. Mixon will struggle to get to the line of scrimmage as he'll be tackled back at the four-yard line. And it's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Here we go. again and he's going to lose yardage again as he is stuck behind the line they'll wind up losing three and now it's third down we all know how much running backs love getting the ball down near the goal line they think they're going to find a way into go. the end zone he hasn't had that kind of luck so far ends up not getting in on the last two carries you know he's going to be upset about a missed opportunity touchdown t higgins with touchdown number eight on the air and the Bengals use the early turnover to get on the board first here in this one. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. A drive that time of six plays. And it was T. Higgins who capped the drive with the touchdown reception. And Rodgers will hold on to this one, and it will come out to the 25. As the Colts offense makes their way out, we take a look at the playoff picture in the AFC. And for them, it's no longer a question of will they make the playoffs. They've clinched the division title. The question, can they hold on to that number one seat? And this is where the mental fortitude comes to play, doesn't it? Because now you're not just the coach talking about it. It's team talking about it. The Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Yeah, they'll have great field position here as the ball will be at the 15-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. He takes his down to about the 12 for a gain of three. Here we go. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Jet sweep. Boyd with it. And he'll find his way down inside the 10 of the nine-yard line. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Now it's Burrow. Trying to impact. And he's taken down. Trying to do a little too much. Getting outside of the pocket. And it results in a sack. Quinny Pay gets in there to drop him for a loss of 13 yards. And it's also fourth down now. Pearson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So he's been automatic to this point of the season, and he connects on the field goal there. And what a luxury it is to have a kicker you can depend upon, partner, because he hasn't missed all year long. Converts on that one as well, and kudos to you. You didn't jinx it. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And listen, these Thursday night games, they're tough on the body. You just played on Sunday, 72 hours later. Hey, it's game day again. But I have to think a Thursday night game in September much more preferable than a Thursday nighter in December, no? Oh, there's no doubt about it. You mentioned how tough it is on the body. How about the mind? You're already tired, fatigued, right? Trying to battle for playoff spots. And here you have the quick turnaround. Now, the flip side is if you take care of business, win that Thursday nighter, you go into a mini open week. Gives you a few extra days to heal up the body and the mind before you play your next game. That's complete to his running back, Taylor. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. Yeah, boy, a 
good surge defensively. It'll depend on the mark, but I'm not sure he got there. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. Fourth and short, partner. I mean, this would be a really risky call. Here we are in the first quarter. On They're your own side of the field. On side of the field. But, boy, what a tone setter that would be to go for it and get it, wouldn't it? You're gritty today. I like it. I'm feeling it. And this is going to be a Colts first down as he's got this up to the 40-yard line. We should mention, to go along with a great game he had last week, he was rightfully named AFC Offensive Player of the Week. And he shares that with his offensive line, the tight end, his pullback. He's looking for more and more of that in this game. They'll look to throw now on first down. A quick throw there, going to be batted away and incomplete. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Back to throw here. Sliding out of the pocket. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Well, based on what we've seen so far, I don't think you can even call this an off day anymore, partner, because this group we're watching, they are totally out of rhythm trying to get their game plan up and running. That zero on the scoreboard is glaring down at them with every incompletion. We'll call that a punt of 38. And the Bengals will take over here, first and ten. Here we go, here we go. Now Burrow. Eluding the pressure right. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. A draw play for Mixon. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Burrow looking to pass. And that will be incomplete. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. As Sanchez on to punt here as he sends this one away. Hardman on the return. It's a 39-yard punt, and good coverage means a loss on the return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. And Charles, you think about this offense, and it's... No, bottled up, fumble! It's out, it's loose! And the ball ends up out of bounds, so it'll be a loss on the play. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And this won't do it. He needed six, he only got halfway there. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down, and they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. On is the punter Townsend as he gets this one away. It's taken to the 26. A 39-yard punt. Five, and the Bengals take over first and ten. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. As mentioned, this one of the hottest teams in the NFL, riding that winning streak into this one. But now playing here on Thursday night, do you think that this helps or hurts their momentum? Well, ordinarily, I'd say it hurts the momentum because now you've got that short week. But when a team's playing as well as they are, it actually allows them to down focus and only worry about themselves and less about their opponent. So when you're playing well, you just worry about the things you're doing well and let the opponent deal with that. Burrow hooking up with Higgins for a Bengal first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time you wait for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. 11 mighty. 12. 
Now Burrow on first down. And that one complete once again to Higgins. And they'll get this down to around the 47 yard line. To throw again on second down. Burrow. And that's complete to the tight end, Devin Asiasi. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. His first catch, good for 16 and a first. To the air again, Burrow. Open man is Higgins. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. This defense for the Colts, they were fantastic a week ago in that win over Houston. And I don't know what the actual percentages are, and I don't know the analytics when you create five turnovers or takeaways in a game. The coaches always say, when you create a number that high, your chances of winning probably up over 98%. I haven't seen that number quantified, but I believe them. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Bengals in control of the football. 11, 11. Options galore here, second and a few inches. 11 MP, 11 Palmer, 11 Mighty, 11 Mighty. Now it's Burrow. Nowhere to turn this time, and he goes down. Sack back of the 29. Jamin Davis coming in for that outside linebacker spot, and he buries him for a loss of seven. Well, they had the right down and the definite distance to take a shot downfield, and it didn't work out the way that they had envisioned. No, that's a situation where if, if you take a sack close to the line of scrimmage, it's not that bad, but a loss like that, you can't, you can't take a sack there. Yeah, absolutely. The one thing you cannot do, they did. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the ball. From the quarterback, they were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. So three points there, and they continue to build this first half lead. Yeah, every little bit helps. And the more that you can put together drives and start controlling the tempo, controlling possession, finishing with points, the better off you're going to be. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signal for and taken. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. We'll see if they can do better here on this drive. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He's going to float this one deep right side. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. He'll buy some time right. And that is incomplete. Incompletions on first and second down. So we see the ball function we've seen so far in this game. The defense, quicker to the punch so far. Let's see if they can get something going here on third down. He'll drop to throw. He's got a man complete. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. What a play that turns out to be, 36 yards. And that might be exactly what they needed to wake up this home crowd. They haven't given them much to cheer for so far. And never underestimate the effect the home crowd with you can have on a game. To the 36-yard line, stop there. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. They run once more with Taylor. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to get the 35. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong. Touchdown, Indianapolis! Kyle Pitts. are back within a score. That pass also evens the ledger for the rookie quarterback. Had the interception earlier, and now he gets the touchdown throw. The ideal touchdown-interception ratio is, what, three to one for the best quarterbacks? But he's a rookie. Just getting back to even is a big deal. Increases the confidence his teammates have in him as he tries to become their leader. Kicking 
team is out there now, and they will send this one away. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had a field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes after saying, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Burrow's throw here into the hands of Boyd. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 18 yards on his first catch of the game. It's a first down. Burrow will throw. He's got Tunyon complete over the middle. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. Completion was given up. But that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. And Burrow going to throw again. He's got a man complete. Touchdown, Bengals. T. Higgins, his second touchdown of the game and his ninth on the year. And they are able to add on to their advantage. In the second quarter, and already his second touchdown reception. Absolutely the definition of a difference maker here in this first half. Clearly one of his quarterback's favorite targets in this game. And I figure he's going to draw a little more attention and coverage moving forward. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the lead now stands at 13. A drive there of just four plays. And it was T. Higgins who capped the drive with the touchdown reception. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Bringing it out of his end zone, Isaiah Rodgers. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. The Notre Dame man, Chase Claypool, in this offense, ready for their upcoming possession. Well, he's within shouting distance of a 1,000-yard season. Going to need a pretty good finish, though, if he wants to reach that mark. Well, I like how you phrased it, partner. He is within shouting distance. If he stays on this pace, he's got a shot at it. But he needs a big game in there, right, to make sure that he gets it. So you know that during the week, in practice, and, and look, he asks for the ball all the time anyway. He's really going to ask for the ball and let his quarterback know he's open. Here's a second and seven. And that's caught left side by Mo Alley Cox. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And now we've got a third and four. On play action, they'll throw. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Thus far, they've been able to move the line of scrimmage very well in the running game. Almost felt like they said in the huddle, can you guys pass protect? Let's take a big shot downfield. Didn't get it on that one, but they may come back to it again. Fielded just inside the 30. It's a 40-yard punt, six yards on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 at their 35-yard line. 11, 11, 11, 11. He'll hand it off here. This is Mixon. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Right, 80. Now whistles and a flag, and I believe a Bengal got going a little All early there. Jonah Williams, former first-round pick, the guilty party. The false start hurts him there a bit. Backs him up to second and nine. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Got a man open. It's Chase. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. I'm Those are the kinds of plays right there that show you why he's the number three man in the NFL in terms of receiving yards. Also tells you there's a full combination of what he's got going in his game. You name it. 
from route running to catching the football. That's why he's able to produce those types of numbers. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's Burrow. This pass complete to Higgins. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Meanwhile, Burrow's throw taken in here by Chase. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 14. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. It was a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Mixing up the middle. And he swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, but I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Jet sweep, Boyd with it. And he's able to break out a one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave him with a third down and six to go. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. And it's caught. And the Bengals are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Ready? They go power. This is Johnson, the fullback. Nothing doing there. They're going to wind up holding him at the two. No gain there, and it's going to set up second and goal. If you're going to run against this unit, especially down here, just beware. I mean, they're the top rushing defense in the league. Yeah, and then they go ahead and they double down with the whole thing because you think, okay, let's throw the ball. Oh, yeah, that's right. They defend the pass pretty well, too. Very difficult task right now. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. From the two-yard line yet again. Let's see what they can do on third and goal. Now it's Burrow. And he's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. A great play there. His first NFL reception goes for six. As his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that pushes the lead up to an even 20. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. The drive will start at the 25-yard line here as Rodgers will not return it. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, and they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Being chased out left. And now this one may draw a penalty. He just blindly threw that one to the sideline. Potential ground. And yep, indeed, the flag is out. Yeah, he hadn't gotten far enough away from the pocket to throw that football away, and that draws the flag. Yeah, the old tackle box, right? Get outside of each tackle, and then you can go ahead and throw it away, and you're in good shape. But if you're back there in the pocket, you got to make sure of what you're doing. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. The Colts on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This will be third and a mile. They'll look to throw here. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Here's Tommy Townsend now, standing just about on his own goal line. Call it an even 40-yard punt, 7-0 on the return. And this offense will take over right at the midfield strike with a first and 10. 11 MP, 11 MP. Mixon with a first down carry. And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. There to make the tackle, Jonathan Abram. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Got 
On second and nine. Burrow. A uh, quick throw knocked away and incomplete. Now the secondary really struggled today, but that's a little bit of a measure of revenge, go. isn't it? And it just followed the basic rules. See ball, knock ball away. Turns into a nice play. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up forward. Now it is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Ready. They'll try and start this drive in the air. This one complete to me, Cole Hardman. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Looking to throw. Over the middle, that's caught by Claypool. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. A seven-yard pickup. Up second and three. three yards remain for second down. They're going to look to throw. Pass the 20. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. It's a gain of 34. When they needed a play this year, he's certainly been the guy to deliver it. As this season has gone on, he's been awfully consistent and sometimes spectacular. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he's got his target. It's caught for a close touchdown. Kyle Pitts with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Colts get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. Week after week, Charles, when we see this offense operate, I don't know, they just seem to get more impressive. They certainly do, and let's face it, it's no surprise with the best in the NFL in scoring. This team designs things well and executes even better. And here, it only takes a few snaps before they're in the end zone. That's how they demoralize teams. That's how they put them on notice. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. The Bengals going to take over late in this first half. Already enjoying a two-score lead here late in the second quarter. Not a ton of time left. We'll see if they can work this at least into field goal range and try to get three to add on even more to their lead. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. Throwing now. Burrow on first down. Throw right side. This is into the hands of the tight end, Tunyon. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. From the 41, Burrow. He'll go right back to Tunyon. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 44-yard line. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. Open man is puts it on the carpet. It's out. But I think a Bengal player was able to get in there. He was. And they'll keep possession of the football. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. And now a timeout defensively after that first down play. So they're going to make this offense sweat out half number one. So three seconds here remain in the half. On it's the field goal unit to see about getting three points. And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had lots of leg behind it. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, we're into the final three weeks of the NFL season. A lot of races going to be coming right down to the wire. Before we get it back to you guys, let's check out what we have coming up this weekend on the Week 16 NFL Slate. Good games galore in that Sunday lineup. We'll highlight the one going on in Atlanta. A big one for the Falcons as they'll square off against the Jacksonville Jaguars. More good stuff later in the afternoon. One being down in the desert where it'll be the Cardinals at home in Glendale taking on the Houston Texans. 
And then on Sunday night, the national audience in for a treat. They've got a good one lined up between the Dallas Cowboys and the Green Bay Packers. Time now for a check of the next-gen stats for the Bengals in that first half. And it's been the passing game that's been the story. They have feasted on this secondary to the tune of 200-plus yards already through two quarters. Meanwhile, for the Colts, they weren't quite as successful throwing the ball as their counterparts were, but they still were able to move the ball reasonably well in that first half. Final adjustments taking place in both teams' locker rooms. We're closing in on the second half. And to bring it your way, let's go back up to Indianapolis and rejoin Brandon and Charles. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. And he will not bring it out. It's a touchback. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. In well, the first half, they struggled a little bit to keep pace offensively. CD okay, down two scores here. So how do they make some changes coming out of the locker room? Well, they've studied what they did in the first half. They've seen what the defense has thrown at them. Now they want to have a plan of attack against it. So you come out, you're not going to get all the points back on one drive. But get started on it. Start chopping into that lead. And maybe it'll inspire your defense to help out as well. Second down. Another run with Taylor. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. That one, a first down pickup of eight. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 41 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. A lot of running backs, a little bit of a disadvantage when you start talking MVP. Might not be the case this year. You think he's got a shot, don't you? I do. I think he's got more than a shot. But what he's going to need here down the stretch this late in the season, he needs that big closing game, that game that we're all going to reflect on and go, oh, my goodness, did he put up a number? Let's say 200 plus. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting one backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, Ready. and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Oh, he's got his tight end pitch complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 36. A sizable 16-yard chunk there. The drive continues. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 36. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be, but still all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he is going to be close to a first down as the tackle made at the Bengals 26. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And he's able to motor his way down to the 16-yard line. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I will continue to go in that direction. First and 10, Taylor now. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. That's complete right around the eight. And the Colts are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. They'll run here with Taylor. And he takes this one in for a close touchdown. 
Jonathan Taylor, his 16th rushing touchdown on the year. And the Colts are able to cut into this lead as they score on the opening drive of the second half. That's caught. And he is in for the two points. And they're back with it and scores. The lead's cut to eight. the kickoff and it's away and he'll just take a seat and the drive will begin at the 25 yard line T Higgins leading the Cincinnati receiving core out for this upcoming series he's having a day here in quarter number three over 100 yards couple touchdowns every receiver's hope for when they head into that game in the National Football League. And his team is loving what he's giving them. Of course, the yardage is terrific, but I think it's what you mentioned, the two touchdowns. That's the big one because he's paying off his results downfield. And still more time here, third quarter. We'll see what else he has in store for us. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, here we go. get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Burrow's throw here into the hands of Boyd. 70th catch for him on the year, and like so many others, this goes for a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. Now Burrow on first down. That's caught one more time by Boyd. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. On second down, here's Mixon. And a good push there defensively as they stop him at the 48. Gain of just one. Here we go. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Now Burrow. And he will not be able to hang on to the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop. They're in a tight ball game, and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Indianapolis offense ready to go again. And the points, they have come fast and furious in this quarter. You really don't want to be on the defensive side of the ball right now, do you? Because you're either thinking, my replacement may get an opportunity. <laughs> Your head better be on a swivel. Totally. Or maybe I just need to get out of the game for a while because I just can't slow these guys down. They've got to figure out a way to disrupt these offenses. And typically, one guy makes a big play, and that can help change things. They'll be looking for disruption on both sides right now. And he'll get about 40 up close to the 35. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going into the quarterback in an expected passing situation. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. The Colts send out their punter as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. 
And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage. That's all. Out of the gun. It's Burrow. He'll air this one out for Boyd. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on the punt for the fourth time tonight. They'll call this a 41-yard punt, seven on the return. And they will take over first and 10. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag, punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. On second down, it's Taylor. And he'll get it down here to the 43. 79 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Open man completes it to Clay Pierce. And they're going to move it down the inside the 25. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Now a handoff. Taylor with it. And the big boys up front, they're going to stop him right at the line. And we got a pause following the play because it appears a member of the Bengals in some discomfort. But not what you want to see this late in the season. Medical staff is going to check on him, and we'll step aside for a moment. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. Sets him up nicely. First and goal. It was a pickup of 14. Now we give to Taylor. And he'll get about four there as he takes it from the 10 down to the 6. So that run gets him about halfway home. Yes, yeah, now second and goal. The end zone beckons. It looms. They can do whatever they want. Full playbook. Run it again, or they can go play action and try and put it in that way. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield. Touchdown, Colts! Chase Claypool from six yards away. And the Colts are able to cut into this deficit here in the final minute of the third. Remember, partner, that's a rookie quarterback back there. Apparently, he's getting the hang of this NFL thing pretty quickly. Got three touchdown passes. You're right. He looks comfortable. What are they doing? Anything in particular? Well, they keep talking about making sure they're giving him plays that fit his talents and also maybe shrinking the playbook a little bit. They did tell us that. Bottom line, he's really good. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. They made the decision to go for two. They didn't get it. They remained down by two points. Should they have kicked it there? A third quarter, I'm okay with it. Maybe first or second, you don't. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm, again, I keep coming back to, I don't like to chase a lot of points, yeah. but I also don't know what kicking an extra point being down one does Here we for. go. First down, here's Burrow. This pass complete to Higgins. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Ten yards there and a Bengal first. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. 
Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. Both teams working on short rest, but this has been one of the better Thursday night games we've seen as they come up here on first and ten. Got a man open. It's Chase. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. Second and two. Here we go. Second and two. Looking to pass. Throw complete to the tight end, Tunyon. 70th catch for him on the year, and like so many others, this goes for a first down. I know I spent a lot of time talking about how tight ends in a lot of cases now are pumped up wide receivers, but they're still big go, people. He used that frame right there to absorb a really big hit on him and held on to the ball. On first and 10, Joe Burrow. Tunyon's got it on the out route. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. Inside handoff to Mixon. He'll get only a couple down to the 44. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction. Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 35-yard line. Ten yards there on a Bengal first. So the signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. And now they will throw it with Burrow. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Here we go. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. Touchdown! Tyler Boyd from 13 yard town. And the Bengals get an important score there to extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. So a heck of a drive right there with the game potentially hanging in the balance. A very good drive. And now conversion to make it a two score game and a solid lead. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that makes this a nine-point game. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And a fair catch signal for and taken successfully. And the Colts coming out now. That last touchdown we just saw, what an important one. Now it's back to a two-score deficit for this crew as they take the field here, and they are in desperate need of finding the end zone. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. 93 yards rushing now for the NFL leader coming into his ball game. A good gain on first. Has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. Again, it's Taylor. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Two yards good enough for a first. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because... The throw for Claypool is intercepted. Cheetah Bay Awuzier with a pick, and the Bengals are going to take possession of the football. He's had a fantastic rookie season, made a lot of lovely throws, but that wasn't one of them. Well, we got to give him one, don't we? I mean, with the year he's having, a lot easier for he and his teammates to accept that throw because for the most part, what they've seen, it's been pretty sensational. Now, this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. They have to like the position that they are in. Fourth quarter, two-score lead, and now the ball back after the INT. 
This is Mixon on the draw. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Two yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. There's Burrow setting up to throw it. They'll set up the screen here to mix it. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. And now a stoppage. And it looks like we have a Colt who was shaken up on that last play. Third down. The Colts beefing up the secondary. Six defensive backs in the game. Now it's Burrow. And that is incomplete. Defense there on third down, just flood the field with extra defensive backs in their dime package. Nowhere to go with the football that forces the conversion. McPherson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So that maybe not a knockout blow, but I, I suppose certainly every little bit helps when you're trying to salt one away in the fourth. Well, the possibility of being beaten by two late touchdowns or at least sent to overtime does exist. But time, definitely a big factor at this stage of the game, is in their favor. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Completion here to Claypool. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Flushed out right. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. From the gun, it's Taylor. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And his throw is incomplete. Quarterbacking 101. Never force the ball into double coverage. Especially not this close to the goal line. The windows are so tight. You just don't want to force it in there because it could be tipped up and picked off. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. He's been big. Two touchdowns earlier. Now he's got a first down here. Good yardage on the completion there. When they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? Here's Taylor again. It's a loss of two, now third down. And now they're in the hurry up. They'll look to throw on third and goal. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Jermaine Pratt fighting in and dropping him for the loss. Come on, come on. On the yard loss on the play, it's fourth and As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And he's brought down. Can't do anything with a football. It's a sack and a turnover on downs. Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here. First and 10 at the own 18. 11 MP, 11 Thomas, 11 Biden, 12, 12. They'll hand it off here. This is Mixon. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Coming up on the final two and a half minutes. And boy, has it been fun to watch this offense operate quite the display, and now they look to polish it off. 
Back to Mixon on second down. And he'll take this to about the 24, a gain of three. And now, defensively, they're going to burn their first time out. Here we go. Remember, they get an extra time built in coming up here shortly at the two-minute warning. Now it's Burrow. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Picked off by Isaiah Rodgers. And the Colts are going to take possession of the football. So the ball changing okay, hands on the interception. But meanwhile here, we do have an injury on the play. Always unfortunate to see an injury, especially this close to the end of the regular season. We'll step aside. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get your reset. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Back to throw here. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Unfortunately, uh, he's able to recover himself, but the clock's still rolling here. Fortunate to get that football back. He's trailing here in the second half. Last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity because it could have been lost there, their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. Well, partner, I mean, if anybody was still questioning whether or not he had an NFL caliber arm, I think you could toss that right out the window. That was a heck of a throw right there. I would agree totally. Question it. This rookie, big time throw right there. Great poise. Stepped up. Trusted he could lay it in there perfectly. And he knew that his guy was going to make the catch on the other end. Nice collaboration. And this is going to be snuffed out. The Bengals recover. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought here analytics here. into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. 11, 11. Back to Mixon on second down. And maybe a little over pursuit there as he's able to take this down to the 25-yard line. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as it'll come with 36 seconds to go in half number two. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right? Just us against the world and get it done. <laughs> How happy are they? I remember a coach in a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. Charles, normally when you see a group score this many points, it's a complete blowout. But instead, they needed every single one of those in this close, high-scoring affair. Yeah, Brandon, I'm still on the edge of my seat after that one because when you have that much scoring and it still comes down to a one-possession game at the end, that's not something we see very often. And in this case, these offenses, they brought it. The defenses, they're going to need some work going forward. So for the Bengals, it's a critical win for them as it gets them to 9-6 and six on the year. And now they'll have a few extra days before they face the Rams next week. Meanwhile, for Indianapolis, this was basically just an exhibition game for them as they'd already clinched home field advantage. And they'll look to regroup next week as they head down to Miami to take on the Dolphins.